it was Christians who were at the forefront of the movement to abolish well, yeah, slavery. Were, there were Christians on either side of everything. And the Christians advocating slavery weren't reading Philemon, and they weren't reading the passages in Micah 4.4 and Zechariah 3.10 about not even having employment millennium. They were just exploiting the Bible. They, didn't re they were not wholehearted, and they're not an example to rebut. They're not, you don't, those people are bad, therefore Christianity is bad. Those are the fakes. You don't, you don't prove the fake is wrong in order to discredit the real thing, dude. That's called a straw man argument. Jordan, call him out on that. Brett, uh, watch the fallacies. But maybe you guys don't know the facts because you guys are out of your league. Because I'm the Bible geek in this little four-way conversation here. You guys aren't. I want to supply these facts so that, the, so that we get the, what the brains really think about the, the, what's going on. Now, you've, you've, all, you've got the people exploiting the Bible because they know that it's popular and cool and everyone loves it. So we're going to take the Bible, dress it up and say whatever we want so, and use that as our excuse to get what we want. That, that's classic politics. That's classic politics. Every politician makes the same promises to get elected. It doesn't mean that they actually agree with those ideologies. I mean, you got a lot of fake Republicans, a lot of fake Democrats, and a lot of people just never deliver on stuff. I mean, I, I'm not going to judge the Republican ideology or the Democratic ideology based on what the idiot politicians do who lie all the time. So don't hold that against the government that's running around using the Bible as a club instead of a book that, and only reading part of it, Sam. Um, <clears throat> you kind of bought the lie. That those guys didn't study their Bible very well. And Sam, you were kind of... You, you kind of got uh, snared into this. You believing what they lied about the Bible saying. They were wrong, Sam. The Puritans that Jordan's defending, those are the people that actually read the rest of the passages and they were using the rest of the Bible and they were actually interpreting it correctly. And, and I'm, I'm going to stand by, I, I think that that is a, a defensible claim. I'm, I think that this is true and I'm defending that this is true. This is proper debate stuff. And I'm going to stand by that because I just cited a bunch of facts in the Bible that you've been silent on because I think you don't know them. What do you think, Sam? Well, I'm going to listen to, I'm going to continue to listen to what you have here because I don't slam the door and walk away. I want to hear the rest of what you have to say, Sam. I mean, there's, there's no one else to no, do the job. Right, well, but, but that's well, yeah, the update. But, but, wait, 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 wait. Yeah. But, so, so there, yes. there are, uh, Sam, to your credit, there are quote in quotes, if we're going to use quotes, so-called Christians on the side of every debate. Yes, Sam, that is a very good point. And it is, it is unfortunate that that's where it, so who is speaking the truth? Who's speaking the truth, right? How do you know who's speaking the truth about the Bible? Look at me. You have to have good hermeneutics, everyone. And I don't just mean Sam, everyone watching this, everyone listening to this. If you're listening to this on audio, not video in your car, look at me. It's your responsibility as a human, every one of us, to have good Bible hermeneutics. How dare you, with the potential and the intelligence that you have, how dare you ask who you're going to believe about what the Bible says? You are capable. Even 500 years ago, not everybody was literate. Today, almost everybody is. We are flush out of excuses. It was because the Puritans coming to America teaching their children to read homeschool at home before the classroom was invented by Horace Mann that we have a literate, literacy-wide population in America that then spilled out into other places. The reason that we can read and write today is because of the pilgrims who landed in the North and didn't have slaves and that that eventually made problems for the British in the South that did. So that's a, that's a whole other issue when we talk about the problem of slavery and who really was responsible for what. But you're literate, you, anyone watching, Anyone listening, you are literate and it is your responsibility to study and understand the rules of knowing what anyone's saying, including the Bible. And if you look at that, then you'll know what was being said here. And then you would be expert enough, which you can be with time, to know who is lying about what the Bible says and what it doesn't. And, and I'll tell you right now, as Jordan Peterson illustrated in the first segment, the way to know if someone's right or wrong is to first know what someone's saying. If you want to know if the Bible's right or wrong about this, and if you want to know if a teacher or a government is right or wrong about the Bible, first, you got to know the Bible, which means that it can't be dusty. And I'm going to turn you right over here on my little thing and look at the Bible sitting right there next to that. That's an open Bible sitting right there. That little open Bible sits on my desk, and it's there all the time. It started for me with, with college. 
but I didn't stop. It was specifically Christians who were using their Christian belief as a justification. For yes. A now that's a well-knit argument he just made, but there are a lot of facts you could be supplying there, Jordan. And I know it was a difficult situation, but I think that there are a lot of facts Jordan just doesn't know. Eradicating but slavery. The, the problem was they were actually on the losing side of a theological argument. Sam, I would ask you there, please make a note. I would ask you to come back and say what you mean. What's the definition of losing a theological argument? Do you mean the government burned the people they disagreed with? I, like, I, I, I really don't know what you mean. And this was fast. It wasn't time to clarify it. What do you mean they're on a losing side of a theological argument? Do you mean that the Bible, that God is commanding Israel to keep slaves? Do you mean that the passages in the Bible where slavery is gone and so is employment don't exist in the Bible? Or you didn't know that? Do you mean that like, like everybody agrees with me, including Daenerys and the Night's King and, 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 and Jesus and the devil agree because it's just, it's easy. It's just honest. Is that what you mean? I, I, Sam, I don't, from the things that you've said, I don't know what you mean that the definition of a losing side of a theological debate. I want you to define that and then I'd want you to defend it and not do the foregone conclusion lazy Ivy League thing.